distinguished service awardee of the Association of Hospital and Administrative Pharmacists of Nigeria. The most active, he was presented the most active pharmacist, registered pharmacist, and most pharmacopolitical ph person by PSN Bayesa State. He's a currently a director of pharmaceutical services, Federal Medical Center, Yenagua, Bayesa State. His vision to do the best and be the best in every situation that he finds himself to carry out all assignments that he is charged with to the glory of God and to the benefit of mankind and to treat men with dignity and respect. May I present to you one of our own dynamic pharmacists, Dr. Otako Daniel Oruense. Dr. Dan Oruense, please. Uh, good morning, my brothers and sisters. Good morning. I'm happy to be with you. You're welcome, and, sir. Um, the host, Dr. Francis Sodigia, my very good friend, I will really appreciate you. I thank you. Um, to go straight to the business of the day, my name is Daniel Otako Rumese. I want to appreciate the organizers, starting from our national chairman, and um, every member who is in the house today, especially our guest lecturers who are going to take us through the topics. Um, as one of you, I always like to start my day with good news. We are winning some battles at employment. We had a session with them yesterday, and we were giving the recognition that we deserve. And from now onwards, they will be inviting us for all the meetings that involve the health sector and like the status. Okay? AHAP has become a very strong force in PSN and a very strong voice and a very good face for the PSN. In fact, we are the window of PSN and the window of pharmacy practice in Nigeria. And it is my desire that we we'll keep it up. The addition of this, whether they are online or physical, is a very welcome development. I'm proud to be associated with it. And I believe that we all cascade these lectures and uh, trainings down to our, our members in various places, in their various places of work, uh, so that it will impact directly on the quality of service that we, we deliver to patients and to mankind generally. I won't say that. Research is a very important tool uh, in anybody's, uh, uh, in, in modern day activities. Research has been with us for quite a long time. Research is just trying to find out what you do not know. Uh, you have a question and you want to find out about it. That's what research will be, like in a layman's language. And of course, we have all done research at one time or the other, starting from our various uh, laboratory tests that were carried out in uh, the universities at that time. Uh, they will call them mini researches, call them laboratory exercises, but they were all researches trying to find the unknown or trying to better what you are doing. So I'm happy to be here. And I believe that we as hospital pharmacists, we must engage in research, active research, whether scientific research or operational research. And just like this one says, uh, conducting practice-based uh, research. And that's, uh, and that's going to go a long way in helping our practice. Also with the new cadre that we now have as consultant pharmacists, we can't be consultant pharmacists and yet be doing old things in old ways or doing things the way we, we, we have been doing and expecting different results. We must take, we must, uh, take the frontiers further than where we are now. We must begin to do things in new ways. We must be, begin to impact directly on the health of our patients. We must be, begin to impact directly on the practice. We must begin to impact directly and positively too on our cooperators and collaborators in the healthcare system for the betterment of everybody. Uh, let us not forget that we are all patients, whether we like it or not, at one time or the other. And then of course, pharmacy administration is very, very important. In fact, I think that is the key to pharmacy success, administration of pharmacy, very, very important. So we're talking about the people who are in the uh, regulatory arm of our practice. 
Without them, our practice would be in shambles. We need people to keep us in check. We need people to tell us when we are going off. We need people to tell us what we are doing right and what we are not doing correctly and how to do things in such a manner that our ethics will be preserved. And don't forget that the ethics of pharmacy or the laws of pharmacy are actually designed in such a manner that they are supposed to protect the client more than they protect the pharmacists themselves. So if we look at it from that point of view, pharmacies are about service. And therefore, we must seek new ways of rendering services that fellow man, uh, particularly the ministries, um, yes, the ministries, the Pharmacists Council of Nigeria, NAVDAC, these are the ones you want to mention directly right now. And therefore, they need to partner with us. They need to know what we, what we do, how we do it, where we do it, when we do it. And then, of course, from time to time, carry out researches on whether we are uh, aligning with the provisions of the extant rules and regulations and ethics, and then see what can be changed for the better, what can be expunged, what can be included. So these are my thoughts on what this research is all about. And I believe that we as pharmacists, we have uh, every reason to want to contribute to mankind. Now, with the new developments in pharmacy in the last, uh, let's say, three months, first it was the consultancy cadre that was created, all the hula balloons surrounding it will, by the grace of God, DB on Monday, all of that will be laid to rest. But I know, and I have the information that um, all the necessary documentations required for it will come to pass by Monday. Um, that's for sure is going to come to pass. So those who have difficulties in um, meeting with their managements and boards of management will, from Monday, give a sigh of relief. And the second part is that the federal government in recent, uh, about two months ago, also issued uh, a letter to all the teaching hospitals and the federal medical centers, in other words, all the tertiary institutions, emphasizing the need for us to go to our core area of mandate, which, is, which has to do with compounding and manufacturing. In fact, that letter was addressed to me as the chairman of Comfy and has been circulated to all the MDs and CMDs. In that letter, hospitals were charged to ensure that they do in-house compounding and to set up mini labs, and that should mean that insurance will follow. So I want to urge all my colleagues who are on this platform this morning that that is a win for us, and we must continue to do that, and we must do everything possible to ensure that it comes to pass. We may do a little of politicking, of lobbying, and all of that. Whatever is necessary that we need to do, we need to go ahead with it. And like I said, uh, yesterday we were at a meeting in Abuja. We met with the officers of the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment. We were able to get our ways through, and they have promised us that future engagements, pharmacies are going to be uh, invited, irrespective of whether we are members of the SU or not. And I think that that is a very big uh, a win for us. On the AHAP trade union, we have very strong links, and uh, we are going to pursue that. And we believe that it will come to pass. All, all that we need to do is to put our acts together and put our papers together because we have people who have made commitments, who have made promises that they will um, help us in that regard. I won't say that, ladies and gentlemen. I want to state uh, emphatically that pharmacy, the future of pharmacy, depends on how much discipline that we have amongst ourselves. Discipline in terms of work, Discipline in terms of how we carry ourselves. Discipline in terms of how we carry out our works. Discipline in all spaces of our life. And that's going to make a difference. And when we're able to do that, I can assure you that prosperity will definitely follow. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I do not have much to say, except to say that I am proud and I'm happy to be with you this morning. And uh, we're going to serve the interests of the pharmacists and the interests of the society. I remain Daniel Orumese, uh, your leader, your servant leader. Uh, we know that Botafort is um, around the corner. And if you don't mind, please register, come, and then do what you need to do. I am also one of the persons who are aspiring to be president of uh, the PSN. And I wish that you come there and give your numbers and support my bid so that together we can, together we will take PSN to greater heights. Um, the lecturers that we have today, I believe, are going to do justice to the main topics 
I have absolute confidence in uh, Professor Farah and Azuka uh, Farah and uh, Mrs. Apolabi. I know that with these two people, we are going to have new insights as to how researches will be done, what will be the impact of researches in the, our practice. And at the end of the day, the pharmacy is going to be better for it. The society will be better for it. And like I said before, we are all patients, we are all potential patients, we are all recipients of even our services. Therefore, if we are not going to accept anything less, then we too should not give anything less. That is my message to us. And I pray that at the end of today, by the grace of God, all will have been all that we have said to do, we will have done them, and then of course we will come out triumphant. This is my prayer for us. And I want to again thank the organizers for finding it for finding me worthy to address this August occasion. Um, I want to thank the national chairman and his ESCO, the organizers of this uh, research outfit and the, 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 the presentations. I want to say that I align my thoughts with yours and whatever I can do in whatever capacity that I find me fit to serve, I serve and the cause of humanity. Thank you very much. God bless you and welcome to the forum. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Dan Oruwensi. Thank you so, so much. I know you have another engagement with the president from the School Society of Nigeria, in Bayes, who I'm sure is in Bayesa now, our own Mazisa Mwambua. I know you have an engagement with him right now. Thank you for finding out time to come and address us on this um, um, ceremony, this speech, this um, webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, no you, problem. Bro. We will always call on you at any at every point in time. Thank you. Uh, you are a worthy son of the pharmacy, and uh, Thank you. we we know your potential. And then uh, by you, by the special Thank grace of God, God will take you to the point He wants you to He wants to take you to. Amen. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. God bless. You. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Let me call on Dr. Ejiro, right. if she's on this call, to give a vote of thanks to Dr. Dan Oruwense and our national chairman. Dr. Ejiro, is she around? If she's not around, I think I'll call on the national secretary, Dr. Hafiz Akande, to do that so that we don't waste so much time. Dr. Akande, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Odige. For, for the beautiful anchoring of the program. I, I, I hope you are hearing me. Loud and clear, sir, loud and clear. Okay, thank you very much. It's been a uh, word of uh, expression of appreciation all the while. The chairman said it. The person, Dr. Dan, who has just addressed us also express, expresses his words of appreciation to us. Me, I will also follow suit, like you have uh, mandated me to do so. Uh, and I want to say that on behalf of the national chairman of our session of hospital and administrative pharmacists of Nigeria, I have Dr. Kingsley Chie Duamibo. And on behalf of the National Executive Committee, I have a research and training committee headed by Dr. Daniel Dikoya, and of course the entire members of our session of hospital and administrative pharmacists. I want to appreciate all the dignitaries in the house. I recognize the presence of Dr. Daniel Arunwese for that beautiful speech he has just given to us. I know that always when we call on him, he has always answering the call of pharmacists in. In hospital and administrative uh, setting to the group. So you uh, would have to go to Abuja, I think uh, the day before yesterday. So he, show, he showed his readiness to, to, to go to Abuja of course, our friends, and uh, I would like to recognize the presence of Dr. Lulu Ojo, who has always been with us. 
in everything that we do. I salute your courage and your passion, sir. And I know that you are also up to the task. May God Almighty continue to help you and your family. I'd like to recognize the presence of Professor Aino, who is also in the house, and all the other members that are present at this workshop. It shows a concern for knowledge. And um, if you don't, if you are not taught how to do it, you, you cannot do it very well. So the essence of this gathering is to know how to do it and how to do it better. I can hear the chairman recognizing uh, the former chairman of uh, uh, PSN, uh, Quara State, my, my good friend. You are very welcome, sir. That's the pharmacist Ali Bakao. I recognize you, you are welcome. And uh, of course, I would like to recognize and appreciate all uh, the, our lecturers for today, Professor Asuka Opara, like, uh, like Dr. Dan said the other time, I have, I have never been in doubt listening to your, to your lecture. It has always been sensitizing and very educative. Likewise, that of Professor Mrs. Afolabi, our, uh, uh, our whole teacher, I appreciate answering our call. To all the other members in the house, I appreciate you. I say thank you very much. Finally, I want to plead with us to please be attentive to what these erudite lecturers have for us this morning. That of last week is very wonderful, and some of us have been, uh, have been using it to our advantage for now. All what we did not know before, we are, we are now much more educated. And let us ask our questions. I hope the moderator will, will, will give us the modalities by which you can ask our questions. Perhaps we have to follow the trend of uh, last week. I wouldn't know how it's going. Uh, I appreciate you all, and I say welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, my National Secretary, Dr. Hafiza Kande. Thank you, sir, for that uh, vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, before we begin the, the main deal of the day, I want to say that after the lecturer, the guest lecturer has given his lecture, you may ask your questions, put it on the chat box, or better still, you can raise, signify by raising up your hand by pressing the, the icon signifying your hands up so that we can call you to make your call directly, to, make your, to ask your question directly to the guest lecturer. Please, I want to remind all of us to put off our mic so that we can hear ourselves very well. Um, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I see, say, let me welcome everybody to this uh, lecture on research. Today's lecture is, is okay, case studies on research in pharmacy administration. There are a lot of things we need to know about. What is a case study in research? We want to know what type of research method is a case study. I think these are some of the things we need to know and how do we identify a problem in a case study? What is the purpose of a case study? What are the steps involved? What are the characteristics of a case study? We know, we have read from literature that the case studies is, is a research method that is um, common in social sciences and other disciplines. I know social science is more on it. And it is based on an in-depth investigation of a single individual group, event, or community. It's all encompassing. Somebody, a very noble person in pharmacy, 
is going to do justice to this. The person has a Bachelor of Pharmacy degree from the Great University of Nigeria in Suka. The person has six academic degrees. He has a Master's of Clinical Pharmacy, Master's of Business Administration, Master's of Public Health, Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical Pharmacy, Postgraduate Fellowship in Clinical Pharmacy of the West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists. He also holds several certificates in pharmacoeconomics and outcomes research from the United States of America. He's a fellow of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, International Fellow of Pharmacoeconomics and Outcome Research, United States of America. It was one time head of Department of Clinical Pharmacy and Pharmacy Practice, University of Benin. One time coordinator of funding conversion program, University of Benin. A visiting adjunct professor in the Department of Clinical Pharmacy and Pharmacy Practice, Madonna University, LLA. External examiner and professorial assessor to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi, Ghana. External examiner, Kenyatta University, Nairobi, Kenya. Reviewer to several peer review journals in Nigeria, Africa, United Kingdom, and the United States of America. He was one time the Secretary General of the West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists between 2009 and 2013. Currently, Chairman of the Joint Faculty Board of the West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists. He has published over 75 articles in national and international journals. He is the editor of the Essentials of Pharmaceutical Care textbook used in West Africa pharmacy schools and postgraduate training. Another a second edition has been published and is available in Nigeria. He has produced many PhD candidates in clinical pharmacy, pharmacology, and public health. This man has received so many awards. Outstanding Performance Award as Secretary General of the Pharmacy Education Impact, Educational Impact in Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and the Gambia. He has a Gold Mentors Award of the Forest School Society of Nigeria. International Fellowship Award of the International Society for Pharmacoeconomics and Outcome Research in the United States of America. Best Researcher Award, Best Researcher Award in European Conference in Prato, Italy, for research on, pharma on pharmaceutical care. He has been keynote address speakers in many occasions, especially PSN Conference, Abuja 2014. Chairman of, of, of uh, PCN accreditation team, for hospital pharmacists, chairman, Pharmacist Council of Nigerian Committee on pre-registration examination. Has been consultant to NAVDAC, GAIN, and other agencies. The member WHO, Federal Minister of Health Technical Committee on the Development of Standard Treatment Guidelines. This man is happily married, I'm blessed with children. He's no other person than a very fantastic, soft spoken professor, Azuka Okwara of the University of Benin. Professor, are you with us? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Francis Odige. Um, well, I don't know. Your descriptions appear to be 
exaggerated. <laughs> but, but for the purpose of this um, presentation, let us adopt them. Please adopt, let's adopt it. We have adopted it, sir. <laughs> and then continue. Um, because you have put me in a difficult condition to really uh, present my lecture now. So all I just want to say is that um, let's just keep those ones by the side and look at the presentation coming from just a simple teacher uh, in pharmacy at the University of Benin. Thank you all for this opportunity and then all the participants who were here last week and who came again for this uh, continuation. So we are here today. Uh, we are here to improve our practice. And the only way to improve on what we are doing The only way we can move on doing is uh, by continuous learning and not just learning, but putting into practice what we learn. So, um, what I'm going to do, um, let me start by sharing the slide, which will guide our discussion. Yeah. I hope you are seeing the slide. Are you seeing the slide over? It's coming yes, up. It's, it's coming up. Coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. Okay. Professor, Professor, can you hear me, sir? Yes. Please. Yes, I can uh, hear you. I don't want to interject when you start. Please, your lecture is yes. one, one hour, 30 minutes, sir. Please. Okay. So I know okay. you will do Thank you, you do less, you do less than that. I know you. I know you. Okay. So um are you seeing the slides? Please, can yeah. you confirm? Because, yeah. uh, this, slide is on. This, this slide is on. It's on. We are seeing it live. Okay. Okay. Well, let's, All right. Let it be what on I a, want to do. Let it be on the slide show. Uh, show yes. yes. Better now. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yes. All right. Thank you. Sorry, because of this issue. Okay, so what I will do, because today's uh, presentation is on case, talks about case studies on research on pharmaceutical care. So I will just pick some aspects of uh, what we discussed last time, so that when we start flagging some of these uh, studies, I'll pick a few of the local studies that we have done here. And when we, I want you to be able to pick some of the issues that we discussed last week. For instance, we talk about the design of the work, where we just presented a simple, you know, a simple design for uh, the kind of studies you may be doing in the hospital. Uh, if you're also involved in other aspects of research, for instance, if you are doing a clinical trial, then the design may be more elaborate. So we'll see the ones that pertain to us. Now, whenever we are doing any study, we must focus on the objectives. And I did say that the objectives of the study yeah, must be certain what are the specific objectives. Each objective must be clear, it must be specific, and it must be measurable. So now when it comes to pharmaceutical care research, pharmaceutical care research um, is actually type of outcome research. 
And so these are some of the outcomes we look out for. Uh, maybe measuring blood pressure or fasting blood sugar, or maybe you are looking at drug therapy problems, adherence, quality of life, knowledge, attitudes, and satisfaction, costs, etc. So these are some of the um, outcomes that we'll be uh, looking at. We'll be picking some of the prior studies to see how these outcomes are explained. Also, in terms of the design, we made a simple approach. One, in the hospital, you could be looking at an observational study, in which case you do not influence the outcome. All you do is to observe and record. So we see how you can do that. Or maybe the intervention study where maybe you impose an intervention. And the common intervention we can do here maybe make an educational intervention by follow up. You know, other call to a patient who is not adhering to medication is an intervention that can improve adherence. We also talked about cross-sectional study, in which case you're collecting your data once, or a longitudinal study, in which case you are collecting data on a follow-up. It could also be retrospective if you are collecting historical data, or prospective if you're collecting data uh, in the uh, present, there may also be a combination of these designs. Also, in the setting, we said you can collect data from the ward or pharmacy department, or even from the medical records. And so, if you have challenge with access, you don't have challenge with accessing data in the pharmacy department. You may not also have accessing data in the medical records department, maybe in the wards, but not in the other. So those ones should not really be issues. So we talked about sample and sampling methods. And of course, sample size determination. We say that sample size is important because we study sample to make inference about a population. And when you cannot reach the entire population, you get a sample. And for the sample to uh, predict a population, the sample must be representative of the population. And what can make a sample representative of the population? There are three things to consider. One is the sample size. There are something we call adequacy of sample size. There's a minimum number of sample size for it to represent a population. In the sampling method, your sampling method as much as possible should um, remove bias. Because when there's bias in your sampling method, uh, the sample will not be representative of the population. And then the third issue is the response. Yes, that the sample you are surveying or you're studying must respond to the study. If you select, say, 50 as a representative of a 200, and out of that 50, only 10 of them responded, then though you have selected a sample that is representative, but the response is not representative in this case. That's why we talk about the response from the sample. To ensure that the sample responds to uh, the inquiry or to the investigation that you're making. And we also did say that the sample size is the minimum that you need. So when you calculate the sample size, you have to put overage. If you don't put overage, you won't get the uh, minimum sample size that you need. Okay, so all this uh, that we have talked before will form integral parts of the discussions looking at this afternoon. The statistics, the type of that we do, 
And most importantly, when you do the statistics using, uh, I did prefer you getting graph pad instance and maybe SPSS. If you use these uh, statistical package uh, programs, they will give you, do the calculation and give you the value. One thing we must take away is that when we say that P is less than 0 0.05, it means that there is a significant difference. And when we say that P is greater than 0 0.05, it means that there is no significant difference. Now, that is just what we tells you about computation. But you see, now we go back, we interpret it in terms of the research question that you have at hand. So if you are comparing two products, the efficacy of two products, and at the end of the day, you have that product A and B, we say that there is P is less than 0 0.05, which means that there is a significant difference. What it means is that the two products are not comparable. So you cannot, you cannot uh, interchange them. You cannot, if you have a new product that you're comparing with the standard, you cannot put that product in place of the standard. It's only when there's no significant difference that you say that they are comparable in terms of efficacy. And if there's no significant difference, what it means this is that you can actually use either of them. If it means putting it into the formulary, you have to take a decision whether you can introduce that new medication into the hospital formulary. Yes, the only condition is that the new product must be comparable to the existing products you have in the formula. And so that is uh, the interpretation that we want you to be um, conversant with. And then also spend quite some time on the writing of the work, which I expect you to uh, look at again. And the more we look at all these, even we in the university, uh, it's on a regular basis. If you don't do it on a regular basis, you won't be able to improve uh, the skills. Even if it's just to collect sample, I mean, collect data for 10 and report it and see how you fare with it. All right. So we now want to look at the pharmaceutical care research, the sum of cases. And I here I'm now telling you that pharmaceutical care research is actually outcomes research. So it's a type of outcomes research. So you may be looking at any of the dimensions of the outcomes. It can be clinical outcome, it can be humanistic outcome, it can be economic outcome of therapy that you're investigating. And these employ both qualitative and quantitative methods. Now, one of the things we will be looking at is for pharmaceutical care to provide evidence for its value. For instance, if you want to introduce pharmaceutical care into the hospital, there may be a need to say, is there any evidence that pharmaceutical care works? That it is, I mean, that's better than what you're doing, or that pharmaceutical care will improve the outcomes of patient care. And the only way you can go about it is by carrying out a small research to prove. In many ways, we are going to look at some of the ways that you can do that. So one of the things that pharmaceutical care research will do for us in our hospital is to provide evidence for the value of pharmaceutical care in the setting. Now, the major sources of evidence you could be looking at are written text, maybe documentation and archival records where you, <clears throat> you look at existing records. It may be prescription records, it may be folders, it may be what you get from the uh, database of the hospital or uh, medical records department, archives, historical records. That is. You can also do interviews. For instance, if you look at interaction with um, the current practice of pharmaceutical services 
in your department or in the hospital because I mean, patient satisfaction can measure quality of service that you obtain from a hospital. You can do that. So maybe interview or use questionnaire uh, to get data on patient satisfaction. Or observation, direct observation and participant observation. And we are saying that it is advisable to use a combination of sources of evidence you must combine different sources of evidence, not just one. Now, I'm going to open some specific studies and then take you through them and explain you know, some of the components as they apply. So I'm going to stop sharing this. Uh, and then share with you some other studies. Okay, please, can you see the paper I'm projecting? Not yes, I can see them, Prof. Okay, yes, fine. Yes, we can see them, Prof. Fine, all right. So if you look at this uh, first paper here, it says, impact of an educational intervention on the behavioral pharmaceutical care scale is looking at impact, an impact study. When we say impact, most of the studies we do in pharmaceutical care that you want to show evidence, you look at impact. Impact means effect, effect before and then after. When you compare the results you have before and the results you have after, that gives you the impact. If there is positive impact, the result you have after should be better than the result you have before. And this is what we call improvement. So let's look at this. Now it has an abstract. Maybe I'll just read the abstract. It says objective. And the objective of this study to describe, look at that, to describe and evaluate an educational intervention that is designed to enable pharmacists in Nigerian teaching hospital to provide pharmaceutical care and to assess the impact of the intervention on an existing behavioral pharmaceutical care scale. Okay, now method. It says a pharmaceutical care educational intervention was undertaken. The impact of the intervention on the pharmacy's potential to deliver pharmaceutical care was quantitatively evaluated using a standard behavioral pharmaceutical care scale. Results, there were significant differences between self-reported knowledge, attitudes, and self-efficacy. Then you have values for pre-intervention and post-intervention. We are going to elaborate on this further. Then from that, they have a conclusion that the educational intervention enhanced pharmacy's potential to deliver pharmaceutical care and also generated two systems of documenting pharmaceutical care. Now, this is one of the studies we did when we are trying to find the value of pharmaceutical care uh, in Nigeria, whether uh, pharmacies can be enabled to deliver pharmaceutical care in the teaching hospital. So now when we uh, talked to you last week, we said the abstract should be structured. And so what do we mean by structured abstract? If you look at this abstract, it is structured in the sense that you have objective. Under the objective, it is stated. Under the method, it is stated. Then the results, conclusion. If we are to write the same work, if we are to write the same abstract without having these subheadings, 
it means that the abstract is not structured. But once you have these subheadings, it means that the abstract is structured. Now, at the end of the ab every abstract, you should have keywords. And we did say that keywords are used for indexing. So look at the keywords here, educational intervention, pharmaceutical care scale, pharmacy education, and Nigeria. If you want to trace this article online, you can type in these keywords. It can help you to uh, flag or to pull out the article. Why did we add Nigeria? Because there may be similar studies elsewhere. But if you are looking at the one that was done in Nigeria, by the time you stay in Nigeria, that pulls out all the studies that are, are in Nigeria. Why did you give me this one with five stars? Another point I also made is that the <laughs> keywords should be alphabetical. Um, the one I bought, the one I bought. Uh, give me the two different colors that I bought. Can you mute the uh, that other speaker? Yeah, thank you. So the keywords in an abstract should be arranged alphabetically. You have E, then pharmacy, blah, blah, blah. Arranged alphabetically, and N is the last. Now you see that is it with the abstract. The next section is the introduction. Introduction here tells us about the literature review. If you read through this, you will see that um, several literature studies that address this study, this type of study, or this kind of objectives are referred to here. Now, if you see the references, we talked about the different kinds of references. We said you might have the Vancouver method, or you may have the uh, uh, Harvard method. In this reference, what we have used is the Harvard. You see author surname. We didn't put initial. Hepler and Strang, 1990. FIP, 1998. Chisholm and Wade, and so on, and the year. So we, did, we don't put initials inside here. So this is um, Harvard, type of uh, referencing, where we put the author's surname and the year in parentheses. You can pick all these references here. This will contrast to the other type of referencing we say is uh, Vancouver. In, if it were to be the Vancouver method of referencing, we would have had one, two, three, four, and five as the case may be. And then at the end, we arrange them and tell them what one is, what two is, and so on. So after the literature review, at the end of the literature review, you have the objectives. So you see the literature review ends with, the patient satisfaction survey comprised, I'm looking at the last paragraph on top of uh, methods. Patient satisfaction survey comprise a validated instrument measuring patient satisfaction in two components, namely friendly explanation and managing therapy. Now, that tells you that the literature reviews that said, PC or pharmaceutical care educational intervention was designed to enable the pharmacies to deliver pharmaceutical care within the time constraints. That's the time constraints where they are working. Can you provide an educational intervention to pharmacists who are working instead of them getting out of their working time, getting out of the workplace to learn how to deliver pharmacists? Okay. Can you design a module of educational intervention that enables them to stay where they work and learn without interrupting their schedules? So the objectives of this study were, remember, I say that objectives are written in reported speech and objectives are written in active sentences. Look at this, objectives of this study were, past tense, to, 
that makes it active. Describe, so you can see then the first one says, describe the educational program. That is one objective. Next one, develop a documentation process. That is another objective. And the third objective says, assess its impact using the behavioral PC behavior scale. So if you look at this, the objectives are clear. What are the objectives? One, to describe the educational program. That means you must describe this educational program that was used to train these pharmacies. Second one, develop a documentation process. So at the end of the day, what documentation process was there? This is another objective. And the third one is to assess its impact using the PC behavior scale. Now, methods. You describe the setting. You can see that um, it starts by telling us where this study was carried out at the pharmacy department of the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. And it tells you that University of Benin Teaching Hospital, Nigeria. Now, it goes further to talk about. Benin, he said Benin City is located where it is located, but it didn't stop there. It also goes further to talk about the hospital, the setting where the work was carried out. Look at the setting here. We have, it says the University of Benin Teaching Hospital is a 560 bed facility. That's it, it tries to describe the hospital which serves as a clerkship and internship training center for the faculty and all that, all that. Then it goes further to tell you the pharmacy department or the hospital is made up of the main pharmacy and four other satellite units serving the outpatient department and so on. It talks about other uh, housing, the drug information center, and then it has 16, as at the time of this study, 16 registered pharmacies and 14 interns at the time of the study. 13 pharmacy technicians, all that. So why do we try to describe this setting in this way? Now, this study or this paper was published in an international journal. It has readership from all over the world. So if we had said that we carried out the study at the University of Benin Teaching Hospital, Benin City, Nigeria, for you, a Nigerian, you might have an idea. But when you're writing for an international audience, they want to know what kind of hospital is it? Yes, what do they do in the teaching hospital? Yes, your pharmacy department, how, what is it like? What kind of services do they render that will now warrant you to say you want to uh, introduce a new model of service? So when you're writing for an international audience, it's different from when you're writing for a local audience. But it is always better whenever you are writing, because these days we assume that our audience is all international. The reason is that most of the papers now we publish find themselves available online. And if your manuscript is available online, it means anybody can access it. Anybody can read it. So when we are writing, uh, these days, it's better you have that at the back of your mind that this manuscript can be accessed online by anybody. So you write with that in mind. So we are still under methods. We have, after describing the, uh, uh, the setting, which has been fully uh, described, then still under the methods, we have looked at the setting. The other thing you may want to look at is a method of data collection and method of data analysis. So after describing the setting, it also tries to describe the pharmaceutical care educational program. It has described it in this section. Then you go further. Now, Look on this next page, you see table one. This can illustrate what I told you about how to uh, 
draw your table. It says table one, modules of PC lectures delivered. That's the title. And we did say that each table should have a short descriptive title. Table one, that's the number of the table. It gives you the short descriptive uh, title of that table. Modules or PC lectures delivered. Module one, evolution of pharmacy practice to PC. Need for pharmaceutical care, guidelines for PC. Module two, patient data collection, objective and subjective data. Patient data evaluation and identification of health stroke drug therapy problems. Development and implementation of PC plans. Documentation of PC process. Module three, PC for hypertensive patients. PC for asthmatic patients, PC for HIV AIDS patients. So now we also did say that when you have a table, you don't rule it with grid lines. That only two lines are required for every table. The first line on the title, the second line that takes you the end of the table. So this table one can illustrate that. You have a short descriptive title, table one, the title, then the content, we don't have grid lines. You have a line at the heading and then another line at the end. This is a typical example of how a table should be drawn without grid lines. So you have all the descriptions, assessment of educational program, and then results. After the methods, the next one will be the results. Now, it starts with demographics. Normally, when you are carrying out an investigation that requires human beings, patients or clients, as long as you are using human beings, it's always good to start with the demographics. The readers want to know who are these patients you used? Who are these human beings you use in the, in the study? That is what every reader would want to know first because every other thing you are telling will be based on this. So if you look at this, you will see under demographics, it tells you a total of 21 pharmacies, 12 males and nine females. It has described them, participated in the training program. Now, this first, in terms of writing, it starts with a total of 21 pharmacies. Would it have been right to say 21 pharmacies, 2-1? When we are writing, scientific writing, we don't start a sentence with a figure. So either you say a total of 21, or you say 21, you spell it in full and put the 2-1 in bracket. Please note that, that we don't start a sentence with a figure but every sentence must start with a word. The only exception to this may be in the abstract, because in the abstract, you may be battling with word count. So if you are battling with word count, you can just some uh, journals who want you to condense uh, by you know, using figures to start. But in the body of the work, you don't use figures to start a sentence. So it presents the results of the demographics, then the results from my school care documentation. After that, you go to data analysis. I did tell you last time that methods, there are two sections under methods. When we are writing method, the first one is method of data collection. The second one is method of data analysis. So you see here, it says, Responses from the pre and post intervention program were entered into Microsoft Excel and checked before sorting. Thereafter, the data were loaded into SPSS version 11.0 for descriptive statistics and GraphPad Instant version 2.05a for inferential statistics. Now it says in performing the descriptive statistics, we determine you now have to say, what kind of statistics did you do under the descriptive? And what kind of statistics did you do under the uh, inferential? So 
That is what you have there. Now, also, you look at table two, which presents results. Again, it follows the format. You have the table two, cognition scores for pre-test and post-test. It's comparing a results of pre and post. Why are you comparing pre and post? Because you want to determine the impact. So you have the items, you have the values. Pre-test, you have the score plus my and our standard deviation. Post-test, we have the score plus minus standard deviation. So that goes down all the way. Now, at the end of the table, you have another line showing you that the table has ended. Now, under it, there may be a legend. Here, it has put T equal to 3.1212 and p-value equal to 0 0.003. Again, this is optional. If you want to put it here, some may want to put it inside the text. Some authors may want to uh, highlight the significant p-values. In other words, if your p-value is significant, you make it bold. That's what I mean by highlighting the significant p-values. So you go down all the way, you see all the other results, Table three follows the same format. Now, after the results have been presented, first of all, you present the results of all the observations. The last part of the result will be the result of the data analysis. You can see that the last um, paragraph on that result says, Results of the inferential statistical analysis indicated significant differences between pre-intervention and post-intervention. Self-reported knowledge, it gives the value. Attitudes, it gives the value. And self-efficacy gives the value. Then under discussion, when you are discussing, how do you discuss? We said your discussion should be also focused on the objectives of the, of the study. The table there gives us further uh, results. Uh, I didn't want to go through all that, but just to illustrate. Now look at conclusion. Conclusion, I will read it and point out some things here. We have described an educational intervention program to enable pharmacists in a Nigerian teaching hospital to deliver pharmaceutical care. That is one. The intervention improved pharmacists' knowledge, attitudes, and safe efficacy. The intervention also generated two systems of documenting pharmaceutical care activities. The behavioral pharmaceutical care scale proved to be a useful tool to assess PC educational intervention for pharmacists who are at the contemplative stage of introducing pharmaceutical care. Now, if you look at these conclusions, before you write the conclusion, you have to ask yourself, go back, what were the objectives of the study that we have stated earlier? That will guide you. If you write your conclusions without reference to the objectives, you end up not reflecting all the objectives of the study. So if you go back to the end of the literature review, where we are, uh, wrote out the uh, objectives. You, you see, it, it reads, and I read it to you, the last paragraph on top of methods. It says the objectives of this study were to describe the educational program. That is it. Develop a documentation process and assess its impact using the pharmaceutical care behavior scale. So if you look at the conclusion, there's a statement on describing educational program. There's a statement on developing documentation process. And then there's also a statement on the assessing its impact on using the PC behavior scale. So once you put it this way, then your conclusion will be complete. But if you're drawing conclusion without reference to the objectives of the study, then you're going to run into murky waters, your conclusions will not be 
complete, or you may end up writing conclusion that is not related to the objectives of the study. And that's a problem. Then for this journal, where we submitted this manuscript, they needed you to say something about <coughs> acknowledgement. So if it's a requirement, you write the acknowledgement. If it is not a requirement, you leave it. Now references. Every study must have references at the end. So you see the references. All the references cited inside the work are now put together under bibliography here at the end. And one format you will see because the uh, uh, um, referencing style used here uh, employed the um, Harvard method. You now arrange them alphabetically. You can see C, F, H, and so on. After H, you have uh, the names with K, after K, M, after M, O, and after O, R, and so on, until the last uh, uh, reference here will be V. So, because we are using the Harvard style here, <clears throat> the references at the end are arranged alphabetically. If we are using the Vancouver method, what you would have seen here is one, two, three. So under one, you tell us what one is. Two, you tell us what two is, and so on. And at the end, if you have some appendix, you can see this appendix. The appendix will come after the references. So you have appendix, page A, have the appendix attached, usually after the references. Page C, page D, page E, and that is the end of the appendix. So that takes care of this. Now I'm going to stop sharing this and pick another one. Okay, um, moderate, I don't mind. I don't mind, I can take so that I don't uh, complicate this. Let me just take, uh, let me just take some questions and, you know, some questions or comments here. Yes, moderator, did you hear me? Yes, it's the only user. Yes, I said I can take reactions from the floor before we we move on. Okay. Yeah, the because is open. The yes. Open. yes. Yes. Dr. Francis, are you still on the line? Very much on the line. Dr. Yes. Bello, I'm on the How line. Yes. About, I heard Prof. You? I heard Prof loud and clear. Yes. If we have any question, we can send to the chat box or we can signify by raising up our hands so that we can ask questions. Prof, I want to thank you very much for, so far for your question. 
Please, we should, we should mute our phone. We should mute our mic, please. We should mute. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we need to get questions, comments from our own people. Thank you, Prof. Uh, your, your lecture so far has been very educative, enlightening, and entertaining as usual. Continuous learning and putting to practice what we learn. That is the title. Continuous learning and putting to practice what we learn. That's all about research. And uh, you have done very marvelously well. So we are waiting for, like, for questions from our people. Questions? Yeah, I think um, uh, there is also... a question or, already on the chat box asking whether Prof included the pretest and posters and posters in, in your appendix. Yes. Oh. It's like, it's like, sir. Yes. Please, did you include the pretest and posters in your appendix? That's no, 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 you don't need to. That is part of your, it's part of your, your main work, part of your result. Okay. Yes, the pretest and posters, because this thing is a kind of intervention study now. An intervention study you have. <laughs> Chinwe, Chinwe, F. Young, are you okay with that? There's a question. There's a question from Rita, Dr. Rita. What yes. statistical analysis yes. would be best with this form of impact study? Dr. Rita, what statistical analysis would be best with this form of impact study? Okay. Now let me say this: the statistical analysis. In other words, the, 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 the statistics that you will use will depend on the data that you have. That's the first thing that you should have in mind. First, if the data you collected that you want to compare, if the data are uh, qualitative, qualitative data, then you have to use um, non-parametric statistics. But I'm still going to explain further. If the data are quantitative, then you are going to use um, parametric statistics. Now, let's go back to this very study. We had means. In the scale we used, we had means plus standard deviation. This scale was able to give uh, you and standard deviation. If you have mean and standard deviation, that tells you that these data are quantitative. And if they are quantitative, then you can use a parametric statistics. So it now depends on what you're comparing. If you're comparing to a student T test we do. And if you're comparing three or more means, then you have to use an, an, an analysis of variance. So student T test for comparing two means or ANOVA for comparing two or more means. Okay. All right. Thank you, Pro. There's another question again from F. Yes. Young, from F. Young, F. Young. Uh, the question yes. is, uh, okay. So thank you, Pro, for updating us. I appreciate the good work you are doing in the pharmacy profession. Kindly explain the Mascocare Behavior Scale. Oh, okay. That's from Dr. Morin. Sorry, Dr. Morin. Explain the Mascocare Behavior Scale. All right. Now, thank you. Thank you for the. Now, when we say Mascocare Behavior Scale, it is. Well, it was developed by Odedin and Sega sometime in about 1996. It is used to assess if we come to a hospital to assess the behavior of pharmacies, what they are doing, you can you say that behaviors are activities that pharmacies do on their day-to-day -day basis. And some of these activities, you can say that they are traditional behaviors or traditional activities. Are there, or there are no behaviors? Or are there pharmaceutical care behaviors? 
So there are some activities that when you see them, you group them to be pharmaceutical care. So this um, pharmaceutical care behavior scale is a standard scale, is standardized. The items are there. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have to go through all that. Now, but if you read the literature of this work, you will see that the scale are fully explained and all the items that make up pharmaceutical care behaviors are there also. So you use those items to assess what the pharmacies are doing. If they, you find them, then uh, it means that uh, they are doing pharmaceutical care activities. But if they are not there, or the degree oh. which they are there is low, it means that they are not doing pharmaceutical care activities. So the pharmaceutical care behavior in this case is a standard instrument. Is a standard instrument. Another way of looking at it is you can call it a questionnaire. It's a form of questionnaire that you can also use. Um, you will get this very material, this very uh, uh, study that I present so that you can see the items in the video. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Well, before we, before I read the other question, my my national chairman stand is up, Dr. Yeah. Kingsley Amibo. Maybe he has a question or something to say. Dr. Amibo, please. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Francis. Uh, I, I want to appreciate Prof for this uh, very interesting uh, lecture we've had so far. I confess that. Uh, I've had a lot of uh, clarifications uh, with ourselves of this lecture. I am someone who has been engaged in some form of research before now, or I did not uh, fully understand some of uh, you know the rationale behind some of uh, the the things I read in the course of the preparing for uh, the various uh, research articles uh, I I was involved with. Like for instance, now Prof did mention that. Uh, when you're writing your reports, you don't start a sentence with with, uh, with a figure like uh, 21, for instance. Maybe 21 pharmacists were involved. Uh, so I, I didn't know the, the rationale before now, but he has made it clear from uh, this, the lecture that um, when you are starting a, a report writing, you you start with words. You don't begin a sentence with a, with a figure. Except probably a layer of... Uh, Abstract writing, where you are the constraint because of lack of space to start uh, uh, summarizing them. So that's uh, that's one area I'm, I'm really uh, better off from attending to this lecture. I mean, I'm also, I'm very glad to, to profit that. Also, Thank in the area of uh, methods writing, Prof uh, did mention that uh, uh, there are two components, at least two components in uh, method writing. You talk about method of data collection and methods of data analysis. Again, I um, read about this and I also tried to hear yeah, in, in the various cases that I was involved in. Again, I've just uh, been clarified. So also I'm, I'm grateful to profit about this clarification. The one area I need uh, to be enlightened for that is in the of um, Result writing. I know when you are writing results, sometimes you find some uh, articles they are reporting about the age, for instance, the average age of uh, the participant. And today, the, the average age is uh, 21 plus or minus 1.23 years. So I've always uh, tried to uh, wonder how that how you arrive at, the, at, at that uh, extra, like that where they write the reference one plus 1.23 years. How do you arrive at that 1.23 years? Is it by calculation or is there a formula uh, in the computer that I can aid? I was in Arabian at the exact age, for instance, of uh, of uh, population of participants. So please, I will need some clarification and enlightenment on how to arrive at that. Thank you, sir. Prof, please. Hello, Prof. Hello, Prof. Hello, sir. More on Hello, the call. Bro. Maybe has a network with you. So let's wait for him. Okay. Okay, please ask Nancy. Let us know. 
He's, he's not on the call yet. I'm finding him. Okay, we're waiting. Are you around? Are you with us? No, he's not around yet. We can send our yeah. questions. We can send our questions when he comes. I'm sure he's having some network issues. Let me also, let me at this time appreciate Dr. Lolu Ojo for standing by. The National Secretary Ahab Afiza Kande, F. Young Ekpeyong for asking some questions. Oluwa Sheun Adesonya, Onoche Ome, you are welcome. Thank you for still standing with us. Professor Bola Joku Aino. Regina James, thank you so much. We are still waiting for Professor Sukakwara to come on. Pam Adekwaju, Bayo, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Hello, moderator. Yes. Hello. I'm with you. I'm with you, madam. Yeah, they, there's a question here, which if you don't mind, I may attempt to stand in briefly for Professor Okwara. Oh, the question is from uh, Onuche Omo. Ome. Yes, that would be fantastic. Say what type man. of client data should pharmacists in their practice areas focus on collecting to enable them publish their work? The issue of data collection, it comes in after you have decided on the research problem. Mm -hmm. You need to have a focus of the research. There are 1,001 data that you can collect, but then it is the focus of your research that will determine what you are going to collect from the individual. However, the ones that are basic are the demographic data. And then even when you are collecting the demographic data, say the age, the uh, gender of the individual, marital status, religious affiliation, you have also got to be determined in your mind. Are uh, all this uh, in, uh, data relevant mm -hmm. to the research topic? I was uh, examining a group of postgraduate students recently, and I had to tell them that in the, in the research, the project before me, what was the, uh, the relevance of religious affiliation of the individual? There are some researches you want to carry out that the religious affiliation may not be of much relevance, but there are some in which it will be extremely important. Like for instance, if your study has to do with blood transfusion or something like that, or the use of contraceptives, definitely religious affiliation will be of relevance in such an instance. So you have to start thinking first, what do I want to carry out a study on? Then that will eventually guide you into what data to collect from the patient or from your clients, either at the hospital level or at the uh, community pharmacy level. I don't know whether that has answered a bit of the query. Very much, bro. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, you see, this one, well, this one beauty about professors, they know how to stand for each other. Madam Prof, you are so wonderful. Thank you very much, man. It's my pleasure. So it's not your lecture now. Then somebody but... is asking for the yes. methods for uh, the referencing method. Exactly. There are about two or three major ones that we normally use. There is the Harvard, and then there is the, um, the upper method that American Psychological Association. So one of them 
within your text, you can use the name of the author. But when you are listing the reference, you have to arrange the references in alphabetical order. Then the other type is the numbering method. So instead of mentioning uh, Azuka et al, or Azuka 2020, you just say one. And the next one is by Obikoya. You say two. So when you are now writing, listing under the reference section, you go by the numbers. So number one could be A, number one could be Y, number one could be O. But in the other method, it has to be alphabetical. So that's the difference between these different um, references styles. Thank you very much, Ma. There's one more question asked by Efiong Ekpeyong. The difference is significant when p-value is less than, I think it says 0 0.005. I think it's 0 0.05. Can Prof please shed yes, more light on this? It's 0.05. It's 0 0.05. Uh -huh. It's 0 0.05. It's 0 0.05. 0 0.05, I know. Yes, it's a 0 .05. mistake. Uh, yes, I know this is a mistake. So please, please Prof, can you shed more light on that? More light on what? Is when it's less than, then it's significant. Like, for instance, if you are looking at the effects of age on medication adherence. So if after you have computed your values, you find out that uh, the significance is less than 0 0.05, then you can say of a shorty that age has an effect on the mode of adherence to medication in the population that you have investigated. But if it's not significant, then it means age, age has no, it has no relevance. You cannot say that uh, the older you are, the more adherent you'll be. Or the younger you are, the less adherent you'll be. So it's a level of significance that helps you in deciding whether your factors are actually relevant. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, please, is there any other question that I want me to ask Madam before we call on Dr. Lulu Ojo? Any other question? Yes, Prof. Francis. Yes, yes, my president. Yes, my thank, thank, you so, thank, thank you so much, uh, Francis. Uh, Prof, Ma, I want to ask uh, this question. When Maybe, maybe as an author, maybe you are, you, are, you are doing a fresh research work, okay? And then you have done some uh, work earlier on, on, this, on the same topic or a similar topic. Uh, it, it, will it be right for you to cite an earlier work that you have done? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. In fact, it will even give you credence. It will give you credence that you have been working in that light or in some way that you are an academic or something, a promising academic. In fact, we okay. also recommend, even if you are uh, on a on a postgraduate program, it's possible for you to publish out of that work, even if you have not defended the work, and then you include it in your write-up. So it gives credence to that work. Thank you very much, Prof. So you can Thank cite you. yourself. All right, then. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much, Prof. In fact, okay, you're welcome. Dele Obikoya. Good afternoon, to... gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, I don't know if I can ask a question. Am I, is it Dr. O.I. Ojo? Yes, please. Okay, please ask your question, please. Okay. Can you ask your question, madam? Okay. Thank you very much. I, I want to find out um, uh, how, how um, scientifically uh, reasonable it is to quote as reference uh, an unpublished work, like uh, your dissertation for some uh, award. 
uh, how how acceptable and to what level can you reference that kind of work that is an unpublished work? Yes, it's acceptable. If I may give some in, uh, insight into that, it's acceptable. But what you you just mentioned unpublished dissertation, maybe to Obafemi Awolowo University. You have to indicate that it is unpublished. Okay, so in terms of rating, in terms of rating, um, is there is there a way to quantify the rating? Uh, what are you rating? Comparing then? unpublished work with a, a, a another work that is ref that is published in a journal. What do you want to rate it for? I mean, you are just mentioning that a work has been done, even though the work has not been published. Nobody is rating that. The best thing is for you to have a published work to cite. But if you cannot get a published work, and even if it is you who has done it or somebody else you know, has done it, you can just cite it and say unpublished dissertation. But the best what one, the most acceptable, is a published work, and you give the reference of the journal. What, what I actually mean is this: like, is it a strong be the justification for some further work or projects? Like, you've done an unpublished work, and yes. you came up with some findings uh, that you want to use as a basis for justifying some other work in a maybe in no a you cannot do that no you cannot do that you cannot do that because is 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 getting published that give credence to those findings nobody has validated that the findings are correct so but when you get it published in peer reviewed journals then that gives its credence the validity that the findings are germane. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much. You can only cite that the work, you know, was ongoing or something had been done about it before, but the issue has not been resolved because it has not been published. Dr. Ojo, are you, are you satisfied? Thank you very much. I'm okay. It's my pleasure. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Afolavi. My in pleasure. Fact, in fact, uh, I don't know what to say. You <laughs> don't say really, anything. <laughs> you have really, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's okay. Don't say Thank anything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's my Thank pleasure. You very much. It's yeah. okay. I, I'm sure Professor Kwara is having some issues with connectivity. I'm very sure. All right. Why we can still wait for him, but we will need to listen to Dr. Lolu Ojo if he's still on this call. Dr. Lolu Ojo, please. Maybe the chairman should give him a call. Yeah. Dr. Lulu Ojo. He's on the call, but he's not aware. So. Yeah. Hello. Chairman. Hello, Doctor, hello, Dr. Francis. Yes. Yeah, maybe we can continue. Dr. Lulu Ojo is head up in a traffic from Ibadan, Ibadan to Lagos. So maybe it's in an area that you cannot assess network for now. Anyway, where we are now is question and answer. And Prof has been doing justice to all the questions okay. that have been asked. And then we just needed to take a, a, a short speech from Dr. Lolu Ojo. But now that, it's on, now that it's unavailable, I think um, we are gradually winding up and drawing to the end of this program for this first session. Uh, I don't know if the national chairman has one or two things to say before we conclude. Mr. Chairman, sir. 
Mr. Dr. Kingsley Amibo, please. Yes, please. And I've just, uh, I've just got in touch with uh, Dr. Lolojo. Okay. So Lolojo will address us now. Okay, that's good. All right, thank no, you very much. Yes, okay. I've not got in touch with him. He will address us now. Okay. 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 Mm. Let me, on behalf of the Association of Hospital and Administrative Pharmacists of Nigeria, thank all of you for staying till this time and enjoying this great lecture. It's not, uh, it's not common to see uh, professors coming to talk to us in this kind of uh, event. I want to thank our own erudite professor, Mr. Safolabi, for talking with us and giving us some insight on case studies and research. I want to thank also Professor Azuka Opara, who is unavoidably absent now due to connectivity problem. Let me also thank other technical groups here present for joining us in this program. And uh, I do want to let everybody know that by two o'clock, we still have the another session of this case study on research. Because we started this last week, this is the third session. By two o'clock, we have the final and the first session. I don't know if Dr. Lulu is... Dr. Lulu, yes, he's around now. Dr. Lulu, please. I'm sorry you're on a, a traffic hold up now. Can you hear us, sir? Yes. I'm in the traffic. I can hear you very well. Do I have it on? You're in the traffic. Okay, no problem. You're welcome, sir. Can I talk now? Please. You are very free, sir. You are very free, sir. You are free to talk, sir. Please. Go ahead, are with sir. You. Go ahead. <laughs> Can I talk now? Dr. Lolu, you are free to talk, oh, sir. Okay. You are free. Okay. Yes. Okay. Dear colleagues, uh, yeah. I, I, I thank you for this opportunity. Uh, first, to listen to the lecture of uh, Professor Opara, very good friend. And uh, the intervention of Professor Falabi is really great. Uh, I can spend the whole day with you because I'm an interested party. Interested party in the sense that the topic that you have chosen is what I believe will help us to lift up our profession and get it to the level that we all desire. We need to do research, we need to contribute to knowledge, we need to be part of uh, what is and in the country. I'm also interested because I think that we bring so far to the discussion in Nigeria of uh, huge concern to me. And uh, being the chairman of the PSN Research Committee, uh, whenever research matters are being discussed, I will be part of it. My interest again uh, is what I know most, what the people here know, that uh, I have contested for before, and I'm still interested in contesting for the President President of November. But the truth of the matter is that uh, as men of honor, we have to follow the honor path. The campaign and all this will not open until uh, around September. So maybe this is not for us to start talking about. I will do this. I will do that. So what I want to that everything that you have been discussing right from the first session and what you have been discussing. PSN can play uh, a catalyst role. And this is exactly what we need to do at this point. Remember, we can do it. In what we do to start the fact that we want to do need this kind of support. We need this kind of leverage from PSN. The present president was here at the initial stage. I can assure you that you will get that. And again, I want to. Uh, yeah. All of us need to have integration in pharmacy. 
in which case we all must be working together and be seeking the progress of each other. And this is what I've seen here now. Professor Para was here. Professor, uh, Professor Irun was here. I've seen Professor Irun since. He started by 10 a.m. Professor Afolabi is here. They are all from Napa. Uh, I'm trying to find a path for the economics. So we have to work our, uh, each other's back. We have to hold hands and make sure we move together. We must do everything possible to ensure that our academicians can practice what they are teaching others. We need to ensure that recognition, job satisfaction that they need. These are things that we need to do at all times. And I believe not necessarily waiting till November, that PSN could be the catalyst for it. We only need to press the right button. Finally, like I sent a note to the chairman of the Board Committee, I've been on the road looking for a path to lead us from Ibadan, 4 p.m. yesterday. And it's not funny. Since 4 p.m. yesterday, I and my wife, we have been looking for a path to lead us from Ibadan. There was a standstill for 18 hours, and that standstill is still there till I'm talking to you. We had to go, we had to take Abel Kutai for uh, some Gota Road, which is a usual haven for traffic mm -hmm. good luck. What I'm trying to bring out of this is that the country that we have is a country that seems to be moving sideways rather than moving forward. So it is our responsibility to decide that we want to move forward despite you know, the constraints and limitations of our environment. It is our responsibility. We, the, the, the country that we are is the one that we must stay above that environment. And for doing what you are doing now, is an indication that you are ready to take your development in your hands. And for those who have stayed since 10 a.m., who are still going to be here after 2 p.m., I salute you and ask that let us continue we will get there very soon, the Lord on our side. Thank you for this opportunity to address you, and I pray God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Lulu Ojo, my Otumba himself. Thank you. KBSU. Um, Professor Azuka Okwara just came inside this call now. I think we'll give him Thank you. one opportunity to just talk, to say something. I know he has been having some challenges. Professor, are you with us? Yes, yes, thank you. So, so sorry, so sorry. We know, yes, we understand. Know. That's yes. the situation of the country. Lulu <laughs> said we should not move sideways. We should yes, move forward. Yes, that is oh. that part of the sideways uh, movement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry about that. Um, no. I heard somebody talking about Professor Folabi. Yes, yes Professor Folabi intervened. Very, oh, very well. Yes, oh, very, very well. Yes. Yeah. So, um, what I will do, I actually wanted to share two uh, forms of study on pharmaceutical care. There's another one um, which entails management of a hypertension. So, what I will do, please, is that I will share it on the platform. I will share maybe three different studies local studies of pharmaceutical care on the platform. And um, I just request our colleagues to please go through them, you know, read them and see what you can make out of them. If you still have any questions, you can always reach me. You know, you can reach me privately and uh, I help you handle the questions. And secondly, part of what we'll be doing with you, apart from uh, giving you these lectures, at least the three of us, uh, four of us now, I, uh, Professor Aino is with us, uh, uh, Professor Enu was with us last time, Professor Folabi and myself, we can support you uh, technically if any of you is conducting any form of uh, research in their practice setting and they need technical support. You can always reach any of us, you know, to help you answer some of the questions or concerns you have, or to help you support you do, uh, do the study. So, so let it not just end in our uh, listening to the 
lecture materials and ending it there. We want people to get back and start doing something, you know, no matter how small. That's the only way we can grow. And for those who are already appointed or who will be appointed as consultants, I think they should really take a lead. Any fellow of the postgraduate college in any facility should take the lead when it comes to research because you should be doing things differently. And one of the ways you'll be doing things differently is to conduct research, to provide evidence for decision-making in your facilities. And please, let's take that uh, as one of our key responsibilities as we go back. So I thank you for the opportunity to interact with you uh, today. I will still be operating from the sideline uh, all through the day, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Thank you so much. I want to say very sorry for the technical issues you experienced just now. Uh, let me also thank Professor Mrs. Afolabi for standing in for you. Uh, Madam, is, she's a wonderful person. Uh, Pharmacist Dilly told me about her and uh, Fats, she's really wonderful. Yes, Prof, thank you very much for assuring us of your technical support or the professor's support when we have issues with our research. Probably you will add some financial support too, if you don't mind. <laughs> I think that, that one will come from the directors. <laughs> from the director. <laughs> All right. Uh, colleagues, I want to thank you so specially for this uh, wonderful time we've had. We've enjoyed. We've, enter we've been entertained. We've been enlightened and educated and informed so far by our own erudite scholars, Professor Azuka Okwara and Professor Mrs. Afolabi. I want to thank the National Chairman, Association of Hospital and the Pharmacists of Nigeria, Dr. Kingsley Amibo, the Chairman of this uh, research uh, program, Pharmacist Dele Bikoya, my, my cool anchor people, uh, Dr. Bilo, is the technical man trying to ensure that everything is perfect. Uh, Mrs. Soyawale, I've not seen her for today. Uh, and others. Let me thank Dr. Lulujo, uh, Dr. Dan Oruanse, Professor Aino, Dr. Maureen, Dr. Rita, Dr. Ojo, and every other person, both from other technical groups. I want to thank you very much. My name is Dr. Francis Odige, the National Publicity Secretary of AHA. Just very now, we'll, by two o'clock, we'll be having another session. Uh, when we started, we started with prayers. And at this time, I want to call on the chairman of this occasion, that is the chairman of this um, webinar, Dili, Pharmacist Dili Bikoya, to pray for us to close this session. Dr. Bikoya, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Odige. Yeah. We want to thank God for giving us the opportunity to join this uh, webinar. And we pray to God that you shall help us in our profession in order to move forward. And we pray at the end of the whole webinar, we shall all have cause to glorify your name in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we Amen. pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, please, I want to remind all of us that there is another... Uh, WhatsApp group, I mean, sorry, um, Zoom, uh, what's it called? The ID to connect to the second, to the next uh, series, to the next session. I don't think it's the same one. So that we we'll need to share it again. Dr. Obikoya, you need to share that again so that people can hook on to that. Two o'clock, we return. Thank you very much and have a great Saturday, everybody. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.